Welcome to our Division Three Week event. Today we have Brook alumni Anthony Ippolito, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and Matt Feldman with us today. Anthony is currently an actor in the Netflix series Grand Army, and Matt is was named in the prestigious Forbes 30 Under 30 list for the company co-founded Moku Foods. Today we're going to ask you a few questions in which you guys can respond after one another. So are you guys ready? Sure. Ready okay. to go. Our first question is, when did you graduate? What did you major in? And what sport did you play? Do you want to go? It, go for it, Anthony. You have Forbes on 30 under 30. You take <laughs> it. You take it. I'll let you, I'll let you run the show here. Um, so I graduated from Baruch in 2015. Um, I played basketball there. And I majored in finance and investments and minored in economics. And I... Uh, I actually didn't have a major decided, um, but I played baseball for Baruch and uh, I was doing all like the prereqs and everything like that, yeah. Wasn't so what sure did you anything. end with when you graduated? I didn't graduate, fun fact. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah. Okay, so our next question is, what is your current job today and is this where you expect it to be? Um, so today I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Moku Foods. And we take um, like clean ingredients, plant-based ingredients, and turn them into products that emulate the taste and texture of meat. And we started with a jerky product um, in December when we launched. And we're going to be coming out with a couple new products over the next couple of years. But to the question, um, is this what I expected to do? I knew I wanted to start my own business. While I was at Baruch, I, um, with some of the other basketball players, we started a, a real estate company to help students find apartments. So I didn't know I was going to be in food, but I knew I wanted to start my own business. Um, but I didn't know I was going to be starting a vegan company because I wasn't vegan when I was at Baruch. Wow. That's pretty cool. Uh, for me, uh, yeah, I pretty much always knew I wanted to be an actor. It's just like a, it's a weird kind of career path. So I kind of had to try to do other things and explore other territories and, and see what happened along the way. And uh, while I was going to Baruch, I was still trying to do it. I, I acted a bit in high school. And uh, while I was going to Baruch, I actually part of the reason that I picked Baruch was because it was in Manhattan. And I was able to continue auditioning because there wasn't a pandemic at the time. Uh, continue auditioning and continue uh, taking classes and studying acting and uh, working on the craft and um, doing those types of things while I was going to school. Um, so I guess it's kind of what I wanted to be doing or expected to be doing, but I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. And uh, let me see, what am I doing now? Yeah, so I'm acting and I'm also, I've been writing a lot, like I said to Jose earlier. So that's been fun for me too. That's so interesting. So what does a day in your job look like? For me, um, I kind of manage every aspect of the business. Um, we have a team, we have a, an operations team that handles like the back end fulfilling orders and uh, sourcing ingredients and making sure the supply chain is smooth. Um, so there's a team for that. I kind of manage the high level areas um, that that team uh, goes through. And then we have a marketing, um, full time marketing person who handles our, um, you know, our branding, our social media our partnerships. Um, and then we have, we outsource our digital marketing for, you know, when we run ads online um, on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram. And I kind of just um, kind of manage that agency and pretty much have my hand in everything, but there's team members to fulfill most of the duties. And then I also do, um, you know, fundraising is a big part of starting a business. So, and it takes a lot, a lot of the time. So, talking to a lot of investors, both current and new investors and um, press opportunities for things like Forbes or podcasts or different articles. Um, so I try to stay on the high level, you know, press visionary stuff and, you know, being the face of the company and then have other people to do some of the day-to-day -day, uh, tasks. So today I had a couple meetings with a packaging person, um, with my marketing person, um handling customer support and talking to you guys that's cool man 
Uh, yeah, for me, my, like I said, acting is like a super weird profession. Like anything, any creative field is super weird. Like I have a couple friends who are musicians and it's just like a, it's definitely a different type of lifestyle, but um, when we're shooting, it's a pretty arduous couple months, um, depending on the role, depending on the situation. Um, there's a lot of preparation involved. Um, there's also a lot of downtime, but you have to be diligent during that downtime doing your preparation or else you'll be unprepared, which costs people time and money, blah, blah, blah. And nobody, nobody likes that. So um, you spend a lot of time preparing, uh, you know, uh, breaking down the script. There's a lot of uh, script analysis that goes into like the early stages. And then it's a collaborative process, uh, similar to Matt, but not similar at the same time, you know, um, it's a collaborative process in the sense that like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of discussing with the writer and the director of like the vision that they're going for and the given scene and what kind of dynamic they're trying to create and uh, the nuances they're trying to communicate in the scene, depending on what it is, of course. Um, yeah, but days are not working. What's up? Uh, maybe just echoed but the days you're not working um there's just uh, there's a lot of downtime and uh you got to just keep preparing but when you're not working on a specific project there's i mean you gotta you kind of your own boss in the sense that it's like uh you're either going to train or do nothing or you know rest on your laurels or whatever and uh it's kind of up to you so yeah so how did your experience at Baruch help you find your first position after graduation or not after graduation? Yeah, so um, for me, there was a guy on the basketball team named George Kunkel, who um, was a couple years ahead of me, and he found a job in, um, in the tech sector. At a, he was in the New York office, but a company in Silicon Valley, and um, he was very helpful to the current players on the team and, and you know, helping network and, and understand what they want to do. And for me, um, even though I majored in finance at Baruch, I ended up taking a job in tech and moving out to Silicon Valley. And George was my referral to the company and put in a good word for me and was a main reason why I got the job there. So I, I guess, you know, networking through the sports program with a former teammate. Wow. Can you re-ask the question? Because I was so intrigued in his answer. <laughs> How did your experience at Baruch help you find your first position? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, like I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, being in New York City allowed me to, to go on those auditions and continue training. I was taking a scene study class in lower Manhattan um, during like the first half of the year at Baruch. Um, and then baseball started up, so I couldn't really continue that. But I was still able, because Jose is such a fantastic understanding coach I was still able to audition every once in a while for projects um but yeah I actually broke my hand uh in the outfield during a game and had to get surgery on it and the day after the surgery I got the audition for um Grand Army the show I'm in and I didn't think I was going to be able to do it because I had I was like knocked out from the surgery I was like on painkillers because it was like they put like screws in my hand and um I emailed my agent I was like listen I don't think I'm going to be able to do this I like can't walk right now so um she was like all right well if you want to um send in a self-tape then uh you can do that in the next few days if you want and I did that and I was lucky enough to have them respond and I went in for a call back in New York City a couple days later and I took like I had like a hard shell of a cast on and underneath it was just like pre wrap and gauze and I like took off the hard shell because I didn't want them to think I like was a cripple or something and couldn't do the do the job so I, I took it off and like I shook one of the producers hands with it and that really really hurt but I wanted that job really bad but it's it was just like a weird series of events like a uh, random luck of the universe I guess that just being in Baruch uh, led to that series of events unfolding so I'm really grateful. It sounds like uh, Jose making a player play, even though they're paint, play, playing through pain. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my God, that was that. I hurtful. would never do that. <laughs> Jose just told me to never do that. <laughs> Elise would. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so our next question is: How has being a student athlete got you to where you are today? Which kind of goes into the one after that. 
what kind of skills did you get from being a student athlete that you like what kind of skills did you take from being a student athlete into the real world and i guess to current day yeah that's a great question i think like just playing sports my whole life um this sounds weird but i think it, it taught me how to lose and be acceptive uh, accepting of that um and being able to have a short memory um and not just in sports but in life because there's so many ups and downs in anything that you do and the longer you sulk in those losses then the longer it's going to take to come back from that and keep thriving so um i think that's what sport has, sports has taught me in general but baruch specifically what i loved about baruch was you know everyone was hustling outside of work and basketball like you know guys on our team had job like bartending jobs after games that would start at 12 and they would work till four and like we were all working during um school and basketball and like yeah we couldn't get all the practice time we needed but like we were all like very motivated on not just basketball and school but life in general and that group of guys you know and it's not just the basketball team everyone was hustling out there um paying their own way through school and I think it's just a testament to Baruch students because you don't see that at other schools. I transferred in from another school in Texas and that wasn't happening at all. Um, so I think Baruch in general just like breeds kids that hustle way harder than the normal person um, because one, they have to usually pay their way through school and work during school. Um, and also it just, I think people just have a chip on their shoulder at Baruch and like, you know, they're not going to Columbia or NYU, so they have to work harder than the average person in New York. So I think just being around people like that elevated my um, work ethic to um, make it in whatever I did. Yeah, I completely agree, especially with the, I mean, with the whole answer, but the first half I was thinking is like right on the money with me too, because um, the amount of failure in sports um, can get overwhelming. Um, and you have rough patches and like it gets it can get really like you can get really low and it can get really dark but like the same thing happens in uh, my career field and I think like most people's um, but I think especially with acting there's so much rejection in this industry that people don't realize it and uh, if you don't have the um, if you don't have like the the wherewithal to withstand that then then you kind of won't last um and i've seen like rejection cripple people to the point where they can't do it anymore and um it sucks because if it's something you really love i mean i guess that's kind of what sports did teach me um that that uh if it's something that you love that much like the rejection is a part of it and you're gonna have to like make friends with it and uh really learning that and understanding that um is is like huge in life in general i think Okay, so what advice would you give to students who will be graduating this spring in regards to finding a job, especially with the pandemic and everything? I would say do whatever you can to differentiate yourself from everyone else, because what everyone else does to apply for a job is they fill out the online application and hope that, you know, their, their resume gets seen and um, they get an interview. But with the, you know, with especially with larger companies, um, it doesn't happen. You need a referral to get in and there's ways to get referrals, even if you don't have, you know, someone at the company. And I think it starts with, um, as a college student, people older than you will get coffee with you or take calls with you because they want to help you out. And, um, understanding that and using LinkedIn as a tool to network and send those invitational messages out to people to learn about what they're doing first. Um, it's pretty amazing how far a 10 minute phone call can go with someone that you don't know and really just asking good questions to them um, can go a long way because at the end of the day, when you, when you, you know, schedule these calls and you talk, you ask quite thoughtful questions about people, they're going to want to help you out. And that's your opportunity to, um, you know, ask them, you know, if they can refer you or, you know, you know, if they can help you out in some way. And I think if you do that enough, the opportunity will come and just treating each call like it's the one that's going to work. Um, that's kind of how I like when I started Moku, I wasn't in the food industry. I knew nobody, but I networked. I knew how to network. I reached out to people on LinkedIn. I met with successful founders 
picked their brain, became friends with them, and they wanted to help me out. And um, and it, that just goes a long way. And you know, I do the same thing whenever Baruch students reach out to me. Like I try to do as much as I can to help them because a lot of people helped me out um, when I was looking for jobs and, and trying to start my company. So I would just say differentiate yourself from the pack, do things differently, stand out in whatever way you can. You know, like for instance, um, this person wasn't looking for a job, but someone sent me a video yesterday of like a promotional video of our product and they did a voiceover for it. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like I didn't ask for this, I'm not paying this person, but obviously I'm gonna open that email and, and talk to the person. Um, but doing things like that to separate yourself is, is how to get ahead. Yeah, and like uh, the only thing I would add to that is uh, kind of get creative with, I mean, like you mentioned, it's a pandemic and uh, there's so much, uh, like abnormal stuff going on in the world right now and you've been given this like you kind of been forced to have this like weird ish lifestyle um that nobody's really used to and i think that like it is what you make it more than anything like um you can take this as you know a blessing or a curse like it's either an opportunity for you to really kind of make your own schedule and go after the things you want um or it's an opportunity to catch up on like some Netflix shows, which is ironic. But um, what I'm trying to say is like, it's all about your own initiative. And um, uh, you have you, you're your own boss in the sense that like, you're going to go out and, and uh, take take the time of each day. And it's not as structured. I mean, at least uh, most people I've been speaking to their days aren't nearly as regimented and everything you're at home in your pajamas on zoom calls for a lot of the time. And it's like, what are you going to do at that time? Are you going to are you going to use this as a time to catch up or pass surpass your competition? Or are you going to use it as a time to chill out? And um, that's kind of a decision that you have to make. So. That was really good advice. Thank you for that. As someone who's graduating this spring, um, what advice do you have for students who still have some time left in college? I would say, um, get as many internships as you can. And it doesn't matter if it has anything to do with your major or what you think you wanna do. Um, for example, like being in New York, you have such an advantage for internships compared to if you went to school in like Iowa or something where there's no internships. So um, take advantage of that. I think do more than one if you can. Um, what I did in 2013, I got an internship at a, a Bitcoin, the first Bitcoin exchange. Um, when it was still pretty new and like you know i'm still like pretty active in the crypto world but um i didn't end up getting a job in crypto but that helped me connect to other people and i got a job in real estate development and wealth management and i don't do any of that right now but um they were all very interesting experiences and things to put on your resume so being in new york is and it doesn't have to be the jp morgan or these you know big companies that everyone wants to be at because those are really hard to get internships at, you know, reach out to some of the smaller ones, um, find the person on LinkedIn, message them, you'd be surprised that, and also, you know, I know it sucks, but do some free internship work, um, you know, at least for a couple of months, and it sucks not to be paid, but people will take free work anytime. So if you're looking for something on your resume, just offer some help to people, especially if you can tell them what they want, like what you can do for them. So they don't even have to think about it, say, hey, I'll come in, I'll organize your contact list, I'll reach out as business development to some future clients, blah, blah, blah. You know, that helps, that can help any company. And it's a, you know, a good way to get an internship. Um, so that's what I would do if I had a year or two left at Baruch is just to get as much experience as I can. Yeah, the only thing I would add to that too, guys, um, is just on like an interpersonal level, um, Baruch, I mean, like, like Matt said, is filled with like self motivated people who are dedicated to, uh, to succeeding in, in the real world. And uh, the best advice I would give is like, um, take advantage of those people, like in a good way, you know, obviously, and um, figure out the people identify the people in your circle who are as driven as you are it doesn't have to be the same thing it just has to be the same amount of uh, devotion the same amount of dedication and 
the same spirit and kind of uh, try to see how you guys can help each other and try to grow that circle um, with other people who are like-minded and um, focus on that because relationships and um, networking, it, like that's what so much of um, so much of the business world is. I mean, I'm no one to speak on that because I'm not in it, but so much of my industry is, is based on that. And my friends who are in that business world have kind of communicated that it's pretty similar. So um, I just really think it's important to, to, you know, really identify who those people are that you want to, um, that you want to be close with and learn from them and use them to push you and motivate you really. Like I'm a big believer in like, if you look at a group of, uh, your friends, like you're kind of the average of, of your three friends in a lot of ways, because we are so susceptible to our surroundings. So, um, really think about that and, uh, build your circle accordingly. Okay, so now that you guys no longer compete in sports in college, have you found something else in your everyday life that fills the passion of playing or do you guys still play your sports on the side as a hobby? What do you guys do? Yeah, I still play basketball with my friends, um, but I'm a lot worse now than I was at Baruch. Um, but it's a great way to clear your mind for me, clear my mind. And um, yeah, my days are pretty simple when I'm living in Hawaii, I literally just work find time to eat and then I surf or play basketball every day which is like an outlet for me to not think about the stressful work days <laughs> but um yeah I keep it pretty simple with those two things yeah kind of similar to what you're saying I mean I wish I was in Hawaii but um <laughs> yeah with baseball I mean I kind of use it to get my mind off things too it's like it's yeah it's like this um it's just really like therapeutic thing now, weirdly. But um, like, for instance, I have an audition after this and uh, I'm going to do that. And it's kind of like an intense audition. So to get my mind off it, I already planned uh, with my like little cousin who's in high school right now, I'm going to go to the field and have a catch with him. And I know that's going to be nice. So yeah, it's, it's a great outlet, like you said. Yeah. Do you guys have any advice to, for students who don't really know what they want to do yet? I don't think they should have to feel like they know what they want to do, um, especially I would say like your first job out of college, it doesn't have to be what you want to do long term. Um, uh, the first job you can, you know, it's just something to get on your resume as a first job. And after a year, if you like it and you want to continue that feel great. If not, you know, you're going to have a new network. You're going to already have your first job, which makes the second job much, much easier. Um, so, cause you know, at Baruch, everyone wants to be an accountant or an investment banker or, um, in finance. And like, that's one job out of many. Um, so, and, and a lot of people switch, like I was in tech for four years and many people came from finance or, um, consulting and things like that. So I would just say like, like I said earlier, get as much experience as you can. And your first job does not have to be what you think you might want to do long term. Just, you know, focus on getting a first job, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be shiny and a well known company. Um, I just think, you know, getting that first job is the most important. And then from there, everything becomes much easier. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Like the only thing I would add to that is um, just don't be afraid to just go do things. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to do something that might not be the job for the rest of your life. Like, you know, we're all relatively young for the most part. It's like, just, 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 just do something that you think in some way you'll be able to learn and benefit from and keep building. Like, um, you know, it's not like an overnight thing. Like it's something that you have to like lay the groundwork for just success in general, I think. And, um, you have to like, keep like very, um, disciplined and uh stay on that path but um don't you know like i said there's a pandemic right now it's really weird and a lot of people are getting like super lazy and um you kind of have to fight that but if you're not sure what to do i mean that's that's a lot of in my opinion people like perseverate oh i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and they like stay in this situation um but it's really like that's like that's like a method of procrastination I've I've used myself at points in my life and I've seen my friends use and I just think that 
understanding that most people don't really know what they want to do, but they're trying stuff and that that's how the world is and you have to exist within it and you have to do that too. Um, that'll kind of get you moving. And, but with social media nowadays and like everything's online, like there's so, like drop shipping, like there are so many different fields that you can experiment in um, if you just want to learn, but you have to take that initiative and, and, and do those things um, actively yourself. And there's no one else who's really going to hold you accountable at the end of the day, other than yourself. So um, you really got to be on that. My thing, my opinion. Can I answer Isabella's question real quick? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all the questions we have. So any questions? Okay. In the chat? I can read them out loud if you guys want to go through them. Sure. There's a few that were like direct. Messages. Yeah, I can also ask too. Like, if I need to like talk, I'm cool with that. But, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Jose actually had a question for Matt. Where are your products made? Where can they be bought? Yeah, they're they're made in uh, the Midwest, um, and they can be bought on our website, mokufoods.com, as well as Amazon. Um, but I think they're out of stock on Amazon. We're trying to uh, refill them. And then Isabella, if you want to ask your first question. Okay, yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I have a general one for both of you guys, like the, just like the challenges that you face either getting to where you are today or like even in your daily life, like some things that you kind of have to battle on a daily that, you know, have kind of become second nature. Yeah, I would say for me, like, and this kind of relates to sports, but I was always like the shortest one on every team and like wasn't even five feet in like my first two years of high school. So like I always had to work harder than the next person to get playing time. Even when I transferred to Baruch, there was like six other point guards on the team. And I knew that I just knew I needed to work harder to get playing time. And like, I took that same mentality into when I started work. Um, majority of people are kind of lazy. And that's something that we can take advantage of. Um, you just have to work harder than the next person. You don't have to be the smartest one in the room. I've, I've never been even close to the smartest one in the room but I've always tried to work harder than people and um, put myself in a position to win at anything I do. Um, so that's like definitely something I've taken from anything um, into anything in my life, not just sports, not just work um, and not just the company I'm doing now. I'm sure it applies a lot to what Anthony does because his field is as competitive as any. Yeah, no, I completely agree with what you're saying. And yeah, you're completely right. It, it, I, yeah, you're on the money with the, uh, I, yeah, it's, it's a lot about um, what ties into that too, is a doubt also though, because it's like when you're not the tallest person on the team, when you're not the smartest person in the room, um, a lot of people would hear that and, you know, use that as kind of an excuse to accept, um, you know, being like subordinate or whatever like um and and it's just like i i think that you have to use um any type of motivate yourself you have to really work on self-motivation and understanding that um you're you're um your biggest fan weird this sounds weird but like you're in charge of where you go in your life and uh, to a large uh, degree and i i just think that um making sure that you don't let self-doubt cripple you, that you don't let that type of thing hold you back, especially when you face adversity. Um, because a lot of people, uh, especially I, I noticed in our generation, we, we are, we, because of social media, because we see all this success online and a lot of it's fake and a lot of it's like really superficial and really over the top and Photoshopped and all these crazy things. It's like, it makes you, you know, think, different of yourself by comparison and uh i think that can kind of cripple a lot of people and debilitate people when it comes to like really going after things and overcoming adversity because they have all this self-doubt festering within them to begin with but um i really think that you have to battle that and you have to um overcome that self-doubt with um confidence and and uh determination and, and self-love and desire yeah, that was that was awesome. Thank you. I honestly like, believe it or not, I feel bad for like the smartest person in the room. I feel bad for like the most athletic person on the court because like at the end of the day, like they don't really it's kind of like being handed things. You know what I mean? Like you really understand what it is to work harder for something. So, um, yeah, and for like the self-doubt, stuff like that, like 
I feel like if you don't have that self-doubt, like, once in a while, like, I know it's not something good to have, but I feel you're on the right track if you have people, like, you know, better around you. I feel that can kind of push you, too. So I kind of want to be in, like, a route where I'm, you know, always trying to make myself better and people around me are doing that or whether I'm doing that myself like I just feel that's a good environment to be in especially when you're like on the road to success and all that so yeah that was great insight thank you guys of course yeah for sure and then, just to, yeah oops, just to answer Is Isabella's question um that she posted which is um how can you get <clears> referrals <throat> for finance roles are these coffee chats still relevant for accounting finance majors um it's, it's actually, it doesn't matter what um, industry it is. All you really have to do is add someone on LinkedIn and say, hey, you know, Anthony, I would love to hear more about how you got your role, at, you know, on your Netflix film. I'm also, you know, trying to be an actor and um, I went to Baruch. I would love to take 10 minutes of your time just to pick your brain and that's it. And that can be translated to finance, to tech, to anything. And just have some good questions ready for them. Um, and what's gonna happen is, you know, Anthony will tell his story and then he's gonna say, oh, Isabella, so tell me about yourself. What are you doing? How can I help you? And that's it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just, yeah. sorry. The reason why I asked that is because like, I've been so torn lately between like, you know, what I'm like trying to major in, like I've been torn between like marketing and like accounting and finance. So, and they're like completely different, so. That's why I'm like wondering, cause I have reached out. I've like had quick phone calls with people in marketing, but I, I don't know if that's like harder to do in like finance and stuff. I don't know if it's like a different approach. So that's kind of what I was asking, but it seems from what you said, like it's all pretty much the same. It's just reaching out to people in the field pretty much ultimately at the end of the day. So. Um, yeah. And you, I don't think your major matters as much as you think it does because it's, you can move to different industries Finance, I guess it would be a little harder to go from marketing to finance, but yeah, um, yeah I, I would just go with your instinct on maybe talk to some people, get their advice, and then go with your instinct on whatever major you think is best for you, and then it could lead into whatever industry you want to go to. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And then Matt, if you want to go into Stephen's question right above Isabella's in the chat. Um, what was the process like of getting funding for venture capital firms? Did you reach out to them with Mocha Foods or did they come to you? Did it feel like a breakthrough moment? Yeah, it was very, very difficult. Um, last year, I talked to probably 130 different investors and I mm -hmm. started reaching out to them before I had, before we were an, an investable company because I, I didn't know. I had a prototype and some, you know, very average branding and got turned down by, I'd say, most of the venture capital firms, um, but kept progressing with the business and eventually, you know, brought on a team that was very talented and got our manufacturing in order and um, became, you know, more investable at that point and got some awesome folks in, but it was tough. I mean, probably a 90% rejection rate, um, but you got to treat everyone like it's going to be the one and manifestation is is big for me like i put a lot of positive things in abundance out there and i i pretty much tell myself like the the ones that i get rejected by are not the ones that are meant to be and the ones mm -hmm. that happen are are meant to be so um i don't i don't i mean i do get discouraged obviously when things don't go out as planned but um i think that's one of the things that helped me is just i keep looking forward and even with from basketball like there's so many moments like that where you just kind of have to keep looking forward and, and keep, keep pushing because you never know mm -hmm. what day, you know, you're going to meet someone and they're going to change everything. And that happened yeah. to us. Like we had literally 130, I had 130 investment calls and some of them, you know, I thought the person would, you know, be investing like a quarter million dollars in the company. And then they ended up backing out. And then the next day, obviously I, I'm discouraged at that point, but the next day, some guy, I talked to some guy and he's like, oh, I'll wire in a check right now for a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> you haven't even tried the product yet. Like this makes no sense, but that's just the way it goes. Like life is so random. Dude. And yeah, man. It's probably like a crazy feeling. Just someone who hasn't even tried it. They're like, oh, crazy. Here's all this feel, all this money. 
crazy. That's, wow, that's, that's interesting crazy. to hear. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, because yeah, man. I um, so for my like a little resume thing, I was just writing articles for uh, this website called Snowcap that my teammate Connor referred me to, and uh, one of the things I would like to write about was venture capital, and uh, I was interested to to see uh, like how that process works for you. And it's really cool to get insight on that. Because I feel like, especially with that, like with entrepreneurs and stuff, like everyone has a little different story. So that was really cool to hear. Thank you. Yeah. And the last thing I'd say about venture capital is like, they want to invest in companies that are going to be like hundreds of millions to billion dollar companies. So like talking with them, like you really have to be visionary and talk about what's going to happen in five years to your company they don't want to know that this is just going to be a plant-based jerky company like that doesn't matter to them they want to know how it's going to be the next impossible foods or beyond meat so mm -hmm. um you have to be very like high level and and vision oriented when when uh, in, uh raising that that capital and articulate and detailed too i imagine yeah yeah that's really really cool thank you awesome thank you now we have a question for Anthony about the acting business. So Kevin says the acting business is super tough and many times not taken seriously due to how risky it is. How hard was it? Okay, your question's a little off. How hard was it to go from honing your skills in acting all the way to getting casted? I think that's what he meant to okay, say. So I can't see it myself for some reason. It's not Bob. I go, Mama. Yeah, I can put it in the chat. He. I mean, it's fine. I mean, so can you just like yeah if you can either put it in there or say it again because i was looking for it when you were reading it i'm sorry let's see i think this is super tough and many times i'm taking seriously you don't risk it how hard was it to um yeah yeah uh yeah that's okay so that's part of what made it hard is um how most people um i mean i i was lucky my parents are, are pretty supportive but um most people don't take it seriously most people are like oh you're an actor and like they like roll their eyes and they're like okay cool um and I yeah and I did feel a little bit like a fish out of water in some ways being at Baruch um because there were so many you know business oriented people and I, I really appreciate um that field but I I'm I'm not as um not as drawn to it but I yeah so it that's what made it hard too because like we were talking about self-doubt earlier um having the world around you and I mean I think people can relate to this even in business uh, or whatever you're studying or going going out for but like um when the world around you starts to question you um you can't help but question yourself um but that's that's exactly what I was trying to talk about earlier um which which is um you need to overcome that and if you don't you're not going to get exactly what it is that you want out of life um you don't I mean my thing too, a thing I would recommend down to this chat um, to the people in here is I read the book, The Four Agreements um, when I was at Baruch. And that was one of the biggest uh, eye-opening realizations I had um, of my being there um, because there's, there's a part in there that really just made a light go off in my head that, oh, like if I'm not careful, I'm gonna end up living my life for other people's validation. And um, that's that's really tricky and that's scary. And, uh, I didn't, I really didn't want to end up doing that. And I still don't want to end up doing that. So, and it's, it's this, con it's a constant battle. It's, it's not something that, you know, is won or lost overnight. It's uh, something, it's like a, it's a mindset that you have to dedicate yourself to. And it's a choice that you have to make. And, um, yeah, you just have to, you have to be persistent. That's, that's my best advice. And then Isabella has another question here for you, Anthony. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can read that. So it says, uh, yeah, sorry. No, no problem. No problem. I'm wondering if there was a time where you ever felt discouraged and like you were going to give up completely and settle times when I feel torn and shut down and used to fight against the stress, but it seems hard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I was actually, yeah, thinking about this question, um, when you sent it in, uh, yeah. So when Matt was talking, uh, he mentioned how there was, there was a time where he had a, a meeting and he thought someone was going to invest a bunch of money and then that fell through. Right. And then, uh, all of a sudden, was it the next day somebody came around and was like, I'll give you a hundred grand. It was like maybe a couple of days after just out of the blue. 
Dude, yeah. So same thing. So with me, um, like I mentioned, I, I broke my hand when I was at Baruch, right? Um, and I was really kind of heartbroken by that because I loved baseball so much. And I kind of realized the doctors told me that like the season was pretty much done for me. So I was I was upset about it. But um, I, I had already auditioned not for Grand Army by this point. I had auditioned for this other film. Um, and it's called The Many Saints of Newark. It hasn't come out yet but it's a prequel film to, to the Sopranos series. And um, James Gandolfini's son's playing young him. Uh, and it's, it's this really cool film that I really want to be a part of, like Ray Liotta's in it and everything. I, I was all excited about it. And I ended up getting two callbacks. And so I ended up getting really close. And uh, you're talking about a time, uh, you know, you're asking about a time where I might've felt discouraged or completely, you know, wanted to settle or something. Um, and when I found out I didn't book that, I think they went with like a younger kid or something. Um, when I found out I didn't book that, I was, that was like pretty much the lowest I felt within like acting as like about acting as a career and like the most cynical I felt about uh, the possibility of succeeding because it just seemed so difficult. Um, but I mean, it's the same thing like Matt was saying, like a week after that, I got the audition for Grand Army. And a month after that, I was in Toronto in an apartment, like waiting to film the thing. And it, it was like this most the most real thing in the world. And it was right after I came out of this place of being so like down in the dumps and so lost and so uh, cynical about my chances. And I think it's in those moments, just like a math story where that's where you're really being tested, I think. And um, if you can persevere through that, you, in, unless you do that, you're not going to know what's on the other side of it. Um, because, uh, I mean, obviously, just from these two instances, like, right after like a low, low moment, like, magic happens. And um, you got to stick around for the magic, you know, a really valuable quote that somebody, somebody said to me, I forgot what it was, but I forgot who it was, but it was uh, don't quit before the miracle. So yeah, don't, don't definitely don't, don't let that self doubt. Don't let everything cripple you to the point where you you're not even in the game. You're not even playing the game anymore before something magic happens. You know? Yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like at times, like, whenever I feel down, like nothing happens after that. And I kind of like pick myself back up, which is fine. Like I always end up doing it, but like, again, I'm so young. So like, I don't really have like anything that serious right now. So like thinking for like a miracle or thinking for like that moment, like seems so surreal. Like it seems almost like impossible to happen. So like, were there, were there any moments where you kind of like realized that you need to like maybe take a step up to like get to this point or was it just like consistency rather than one big like moment that makes mm. sense yeah I, yeah no this this makes me think of like us uh, something i heard kevin hart was on a podcast and he was like <laughs> one of the hardest things in the world is is to do something and try you're trying to make a change in your life and you're doing something and you're trying as hard as you can every day, but you don't see anything happening. Like you don't see any mm -hmm. progress being made. So that's like the hardest thing in the world. And I, I could really relate to that because I, I felt, I felt that a lot of times and I'm sure not to speak for you, Matt, but I'm sure there was instances where you kind of felt similarly that you're like, wow, I'm like literally working my ass off and I'm not seeing progress. But I think the important thing to realize is like, just because there's no progress in the physical world doesn't mean you haven't made progress as a person and you haven't learned things but the only way you actually learn those things is if you put yourself out there and you're willing to fail. And even if you do fail, you know, you learn from those failures and you're stronger for the next opportunity. And I'm not saying that like, you know, it's guaranteed that some like magical thing is going to happen. But um, if you stick with anything long enough and you're persistent enough, and if you believe in yourself, you're really giving yourself a much better chance than a lot of the kids in our generation because a lot of the kids in our generation okay. don't know how to do that anymore so okay and yeah. kind of like going off of that I'm sorry like I haven't been talking, but like have you ever felt like you're fighting for something that maybe wasn't for you anymore like have you ever felt like acting or even like for Matt like creating your own business like did you ever feel like okay this isn't worth it at times like did you ever feel like kind of on the edge of like giving up completely or was it always like a passion almost similar to anthony like 
starting my own business and especially like in something that I was passionate about, which was like plant-based eating and sustainable foods. Like I knew I was on the right path. It just something inside me just told it to me. And like, I've had com like very, very down moments, like the most down in my life. And those moments were actually like the biggest blessing in disguises for my business. And that's when I learned that like, like when you have those failures, you don't know at the time whether it's good or bad. It feels like shit, mm -hmm. but you don't know what it's going to result in for what's coming next. So you almost have to trust that it could be something that will help you, even though it's a door shutting in your face, because you don't know what that next door will lead to. So you almost just have to have faith that like you're, you're in the right direction and whatever's happening right now. Yeah. It, it seems like it sucks, but it might actually be the best thing ever. Like, you know, if you got denied from a school and then you went to Baruch and then you ended up meeting your best friends and playing with your favorite coach, whatever, like at the time it sucked, but like you have to trust that um, you're on the right path. Yeah. I, yeah. Com I completely agree. I, I just think that um, you have to, you have to trust your gut to the point where, you know, questioning yourself on some level, if you're, you know, it's, it's good because you're being self-aware and you're, you're being realistic. That's all good stuff. But like, at the same time, um, a lot of people, especially, like I said, because of the social media and you see all this instant success seeming yeah. and, and, you know, it causes you to question yourself a million times over and may, to the point where, you know, you can't act at, at your fullest potential. And so my advice would be to just, you know, decide what direction you're going in, at least for, you know, a certain portion of your life. Like, all right, well, right now I'm going to try this and don't, don't quit so easy and, and, and hang in there and, and uh, play it out, you know, trust your gut because mm -hmm. you made the decision to yeah. get into it. So, you know, and Anthony just brought up a really good point. Like, obviously there's the hardest times are when not knowing when to quit or keep going. And just because you're passionate yeah. about something doesn't mean you should always keep going, you know, like, but he brought up a good point saying that set a certain time limit. And I think that's super important. It's something I learned way after college. But let's say I want to start my own business. Let's say I wanted to pursue acting or go professional in a sport. I think the, the best way to do it stress-free is to say, okay, I'm going to give myself 18 months or two years, and I'm going to allow myself to put everything into it and give myself the best shot to get there. And if it doesn't get there on August 2022, I'm going to allow myself to, to take a, a different direction. But setting that and actually writing it down will, like, allow yourself to put the most into it and not stress every day questioning whether it's the right decision or not yeah I love that too because also when you do something like that you might not even realize it but you're almost like you're giving yourself an expiration date so you're like forcing yourself to hold yourself accountable during that amount of time because you only have that much time um, so you're going to give it your best during that time so you might make more progress in that two, 18 months or two years than you would have made in four years of being kind of confused, wishy-washy. I'm not sure if I want to do this. I'm trying, you know, three other things at the same time. So I really, I really agree with that. I think it's in terms of productivity, like that's, that's really, that's huge. Like you'll, you'll get way further um, with that awesome. type of a mindset. Awesome. Thank you so much. Amanda, I just wanted to make a comment. Anthony and, and Matt, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I'm Heather McCullough. I'm the athletic director for the last four and a half years. Um, and I think this is really one of the most interactive um, uh, calls that we've had. So your advice and, 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 and um, you know, lifelong lessons are certainly helping the student athletes that are on here. To, to Isabella, I just wanted to say one quick thing to that. It just comes to mind from the dialogue from the two gentlemen. Um, it's that find your tribe. Um, you have to find people that are gonna uplift you. It's about the five people that you surround yourself with. So, so the conversation centered around you and you doing it alone. Um, one of the things I learned you know, as, as an executive, as an administrator is, is I can't do this alone. I have a fabulous team surrounding me. And then outside of that team, I have another level and layer of folks that champion me. And then I have another layer. Um, you have to find the tribe and the, and the people that are gonna you know, add value, value add to everything that you do from your dark days to your successes. So I would just offer that. It's, it's one thing that resonates with me and 
and I've utilized and you lean back on because you're not going to know everything and you're not going to know um, how, you know, what path to go. Um, all points taken that, that the two gentlemen, um, you know, offered to you. So um, kudos, kudos to you guys for that. Um, one question I did have and kind of got buried in the chat, and I think it's really important, again, for the student athletes that are on here is, is now that you've embarked on this and you've kind of, you know, trusted the path and the process, what, what's your next goal? Where do you see yourself? Um, Carrie and I were sharing um, offline, but where do you guys see yourself in the next 10 years? Like, you know, talk a little bit about goal setting, if you can. Yeah. Um... You know, I honestly, I used to goal set five, 10 years ahead of time. And I've actually learned like for me personally, I, I don't like doing it. Um, I like to set, um, yeah, I, I honestly don't do it anymore. And the reason I say that is things for me have changed so much so rapidly. Um, so I set shorter term goals, you know, month out, six months out, maybe a year out, but like, I know what I want to do long term, like as a person, and you know, help people, help the younger generation, and and help make the food system better. But it's crazy. Like for Moku, it's its own entity. It can go in any direction now, and I kind of just have to put good energy into it. And if I do anything, if I get too connected to it, then it could take me for a wild mental ride. And I, I try not to stay too connected to it, as kind of dumb as that sounds. Um, but for me personally, like as long as I'm happy every day and I'm waking up excited and I'm doing, you know, the righteous thing every day, that's all that really matters to me. And I know like my life can go in 10 different directions. I don't know where I'll be living next year. I don't know um, who my, you know, top three friends will be that I'll be surrounded with. And for me personally, like, I think it, it is great to goal set. Um, but for me personally, I, I just don't do it. Yeah, I mean, it's so weird listening to you, Matt, because like, um, there's, there's so many things that you're saying that I'm just like, Oh, yeah, that's the exact same for me. It's like, it's wild how many, um, how many things are, are like, very similar. Um, but it's like, yeah, I can't really you can't goal set too much because um, especially in my field, it's a creative field. And when I go out for an audition, I'm not, I'm not in charge of who they book. So, you know, I have certain goals and ideas of, uh, you know, like kind of like a rough sketch of like what I would like um, for, you know, a career type of thing. Um, but it's really out of my hands the same way that, you know, your business is its own entity. It's like my career is kind of not fully in my hands as much as it is in a different job. So it's like I, I like I didn't know you know, I didn't know I was going to book this part. If I got the Sopranos film, then, then my career would have gone in that direction, which would have been cool, but it would have been different. And I had no hand in that. I try my best in every opportunity I get. And I just think that's the most important part is just um, being, you know, very diligent about capitalizing on your opportunities when you get them. And, and, and then whatever happens thereafter is just like, that's how it goes that's how the cards that's how the chips fall or whatever so yeah I completely think uh I'm very similar in that regard um yeah there are certain things I'm discovering like during this pandemic I briefly mentioned it at the beginning of this but like I'm really enjoying writing screenwriting so I'm getting really into that and that's something that you have a little bit more control over so I kind of like that I'm kind of doing that on the side as like a uh you know just like a, an alternative thing that I I kind of use as an outlet and also get some joy from and if if I'm lucky enough to to have one of those scripts sell or something like that then it would you know maybe turn into something uh bigger and more professional but right now it's kind of just a fun thing that's still connected it's still in the same universe as what I like to do for a job so yeah you just I, you just gotta you know I, I agree with you just short-term goals like what are you enjoying doing what is also not only what are you enjoying but what is proactive um that you can do that's fun but also help uh progress your career like th those types of things like you just i feel like it's really helpful to just focus on those things and cultivate um cultivate certain things um certain attributes um 
of your person that could benefit yourself in that given career. Cause a career is a very broad thing and a business is a part of it, but it's not the whole thing, but you at the end of the day, you're your biggest product because that's what's in that's, you know, that's what's creating all of this. So how can I build me as, as best as possible? And then that'll lead to whatever it leads to. But I think that's the, that's a good way to go about it. But Gary had another question. What was the hardest decision you ever had to make? Anthony, you want to go first? <laughs> hardest decision I ever had to make? It sounds like a tough one to think about. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't decide what to eat for breakfast this morning, so I just ate nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm not good. I'm not good with this stuff. Uh, hardest decision I ever had to... I get... I, it, um, honestly, where to go to college was a really hard decision. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was really confused. I really liked baseball. Uh, I really um, liked a bunch of schools that I was, I was looking at. Um, and, and I ended up going to Baruch because this is weird and it kind of contradicts what we're talking about, but like, I felt like I was able to, to do a couple of things at once. Um, I was able to keep a couple of dreams alive at the same time. I was able to, you know, play baseball because I really loved doing it. I didn't want to give it up. But in most other instances, if I went anywhere else, I would have to give up the, the acting um, because I couldn't audition in, in the city and I couldn't train in the city. And that's where everything's kind of happening for that. So I would have had to put that on the back burner. And I really didn't want to do that. But I also didn't want, you know, I didn't want uh, my last high school game to be my last baseball game, period. I wasn't really ready for that. Um, so that was a really hard decision that, that I had to make at that time. And I, I think it's crazy that at 17 years old, in this society, like people are forced to make a really big decision like that. Um, and that's why I think it's the hardest decision for a lot of people at, up to that point. But um, you just got to try your best and take a leap of faith. And that's kind of what I did. And uh, I think that's the only you know thing I would hope for most people to do the same thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would say for me, like about a year into starting Moku, we were working with a manufacturer in Southern California to make our jerky. And, um, you know, at that point we had investment money in, we had, you know, our social media building up our launch um, and we had a launch day and I got the product um, and we had done trials and tests and it tasted great. And when I got the final product, I had about 2000 units that I was dropping off at the fulfillment center to start fulfilling the orders on like, you know, in a couple of days for our launch. And I tried it and it was terrible. It was nothing like I expected it. It wasn't supposed to taste like that. And um, I basically had to call off our launch. I had to fire the manufacturer. I had to pause my entire team. I had to tell my investors that we couldn't launch and had to go back to square zero. Um, it, it definitely felt like the right decision, but it was a very difficult one. Um, but yeah, I mean, anytime I'm, I'm like very stuck in deciding what to do, I just like really go inwards and try to ask myself like, you know, what is the best decision here? And, and usually I'm able to make the right decision, I think. And then Julia has a question. She said, how do you know when to settle in your career? For example, let's say you have a really good job at, at the moment, but you have this dream of making it something better. How do you know whether you should keep striving or settle? It's a good question. Do you want to go? Yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, before I started Moku, I was I was making really good money at a tech company and not, not working that much and like great perks and it was very comfortable, but I was like, is this really what I want to do? Like, am I, am I fulfilling my own passions? And the answer was no. So I think like when you're at this point where you want to know if you should settle or not, I think you should write down what is important to you is it money? Is it free time freedom? Is it having a family? Is it just surfing every day and, and being comfortable with not much? Um, and I think if you write down enough of those and, and talk to people, talk to your family, talk to your the ones you trust and get their opinion. And after you kind of gather all those opinions um, and you know what is important to you after seeing it on paper, I think you'll be able to know what direction you want to do go in. Yeah. I, I mean, I think uh, I'm a big believer in uh, in dreaming, uh, but like, um, 
relatively within reason. I, I mean, because yeah, I mean, if you have this intuitive feeling that you're not really happy with what you're doing and what you're doing is good, but you're not really happy and you want, you have this dream of it being something bigger, you know, we're in our, I mean, most of us are in our twenties, like do it or early twenties, like do it, like try and mm -hmm. see what happens. You know, I mean, you got to this point already. And if you're already in a situation where you're pretty comfortable and you're succeeding, but you want more success, well, you, you were smart enough and diligent enough to get to the point where you are. So keep pushing the envelope. I mean, we're at the age where I think you can kind of afford to do it. I think like, you know, people are afraid of like free falling and everything, but I mean, that, that kind of leads to complacency if you're, if you're too afraid to, to take those big risks. And I, I think that Matt was able to, was able to take some risks that led to where he's at. And without those risks, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that's kind of what separates a lot of people from the majority um, is, is the willingness to take risks and go out on a limb and say, all right, well, like, I'm going to, I'm going to really try something different here. And uh, maybe I don't have everybody in my circle on board. Maybe, maybe people are looking at me and are like, are you sure? Like, that seems kind of crazy. And like, I, my advice is like, I think you're in your early twenties. Like if you think you can do it, if you think there's a way, then go find out, you know? Um, John has a question. Anthony, when is the big movie coming out with John? Joe Stolzer? Yeah, so Joe Stolzer. Yeah, so that film, you know, I I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think um, the Oscars, we're waiting for the Oscars to go back into out of the pandemic before because Joe thinks he's going to get a nomination. So, and I, I think so too. I think so too. I think it's brilliant. We're not going to talk about it. Right now it's all confidential. Yeah. I think we'll tell the questions that were in the chat. If anyone else has questions, you can put them in the chat or unmute yourselves and ask them yourself too. Um, Anthony and Matt, if you guys would are okay with it. Could you put your contact information in the chat for anyone who wants to reach out to you guys in the future, LinkedIn or email, social media, anything like that, whatever you guys are comfortable with. Thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Yeah, you guys had awesome questions. And at the end of the day, like no one has it figured out. Just remember that even if they look like they do. Um, so yeah, everyone is just trying, everyone's just trying to do their best. Yeah, I completely agree with what Matt's saying. Like, uh, I com like I was doing. I did an interview for Sirius XM Radio like a, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I had my publicist like send me an email of of the recording because like my mom didn't get to hear it and she wanted to hear it or something. So I play it for her. She was like, "Wow, you sound like you really know what you're talking about." And I'm like, "Yeah, isn't that great?" <laughs> because it's like. It nobody really knows and like you know my mom's someone who's seen you know my confusion and me during my low points and but you hear this like finished product you know and it's similar to like what you see on social media and like not saying that it's fake but you know you know people present their best selves and trying to remember to not get intimidated by that and that you know the world's a messy place people are messy people are worried and insecure and everything like that that like nobody's immune from those things that make us human so you know just a part of everything thank you very much for having us on and anthony it was great to hear your story too and um yeah but yeah Again. thank you for having us yeah thank you guys thank so you much guys. Yeah, thank you time. so much it. stay connected it a lot stay safe yeah. our Bye. pleasure yeah take care everybody Bye.